question back there. I do. Um, I am a small business owner myself, and one of the things that I'm learning as I go, firstly, I don't have enough days in the week. I don't have enough hours a day. I wear so many hats and I'm, um, you know, I'm not tired out after three years, so I guess that's testimonial and I'm actually doing something. One of the things I'm finding though is I have a lot of shortcomings. I don't know how to overcome them quickly to keep going. And I'm curious about Mr. Washcock, because you are, uh, you know, a from scratch entrepreneur like me. And I'm curious to know how you got some of the skills that you may have been Lasting other than mentors, which I would love to hook up with somebody to get me some mentors. It's um, very interesting in knowing, you know, some um, how other businesses do this. But some of the shortcomings, like you know, I don't know how you, uh, for example, uh, the technology to do the website. Did you have the skills? Because there is a great deal of technology and skill that's needed to get something going, and uh, you know, other stuff which may not have been your forte. Um, I don't know, accounting or you know, just the mundane little stuff that happens day-to-day, -day and you have to keep track of it, without paying an arm and a leg, which, you know, <laughs> you don't have money for. What you're experiencing, you, it defines entrepreneurialism, first of all. So um, know that you're in a very good company with what you're experiencing. Um, let me share with something that I feel is profound, and it does answer your question. Success is not about being the best. It's about being your best, what you're capable of doing. It's, don't, it's not defined by what the Joneses say or, or what the commercials are portraying, okay? Um, it's about, did you at the end of the day maximize the God-given talents that you've been given? If at the end of the day, at the end of the week, at the end of the month, you are able to say that you gave it your all and used your talents to the best of the abilities, that honestly is what defines success. The three areas that I, beyond my faith that I believe has helped me get where I'm at, and I know you said outside of mentorship, but we as a culture, we undervalue the true meaning of mentorship. I can't find anywhere that I've, all the research I do that says that we are a race that is built upon solving problems by ourselves. I don't see that. That's not how we define men, women. Um, Mentorships are important, and it's, it's like a, we consider a stock portfolio that is diverse is a good one, and a strong one that gives you the best opportunities. Same thing with mentors. We have many disciplines in our lives, physical, knowledge, family, financial. You need a mentor in each area. and that Because I, I don't have the accounting abilities. I don't have... Um, you know, the website design capabilities. Thank goodness I've married a wife who's got that, uh, those talents. So um, my, my, my talents lie differently. My talents lie through my drive and my passion. The other area is, and they said it, don't be scared to fail. Failure is truly the tuition that you pay for success. We learn the most when we're at, in our deep valleys, when we experience our failures. Um, and, I, and I would say lastly, where you will gain a lot of knowledge, and, and we're not taught this, you will gain more knowledge than you've ever imagined through humbleness, okay? Again, you didn't hear these guys talk about eyes, eyes, it was talking about everybody else. Humbleness breeds passion, it breeds success, it breeds admiration. I know about shame, not from shame, but from what other people say. And he'll t I know for a fact he'll tell you his wife is part of the major reason for his success. You know, I know about Scott Mallard because, and, and Garrett, because of their reputation precedes them. I don't know them personally, but I hear how other people talk about them. I know Danny, he gives so much credit to his dad and the legacy he's who left behind that Danny's trying to leave behind. So, you know, again, the, the humbleness, the not being afraid to fail, um, and the mentorships are, are truly how, how you gain success. And again, you can't live day to day. We, we, today in today's society, we all have multiple irons in the fires. Anyone who wants to try to get somewhere. So we're going to get burned out. But there again, the mentors are going to rejuvenate us. So I hope that, an that answers your question. And let me congratulate you. You've already passed the biggest hurdle there is. <laughs> if I don't die from exhaustion. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you have admitted you're, you've got some things that you need to work on. 
would you honor me in letting us kind of do a, a, a personal entrepreneurial audit for you? I would love that. Of, of wonderful people like Tom Shea and some others, my Edison team, that can come and just sit down with you and talk about what you're frustrated with and find ideas. Uh, we brainstorm for companies. We'll, we'll take a team into a company and, for, and, and spend an hour and we'll come up with a hundred new ideas for that company. Tom's facilitated a bunch of, uh, of, of, of new creative ideas for your business. And part of this Edison team are business consultants. Uh, and from the brainstorming, we brainstorm for uh, uh, Groucho's downtown restaurant. And she, she loved it so much, she, she even hired one of the, the Edison team members like Tom to consult with her business. Her, her, her sales have increased because of that advice. So let us do that for you. And while we're hooking you up, <laughs> uh, connected with today. Jeff Newell sat down here in the second row. I want you to meet Jeff before you leave because the state of North Carolina through the community college system provides you a personal consultant. And, and he can help you also. And it's a combination of all these resources through the chain, through Bill Parrish and his resources, Scott Millar, through the resources of the college. That's where you find your success. That's what we're put here to do. And, and so we're, we're going to assure that you succeed. Uh, it may not be in the way that you're perceiving it to be right now, but we can help you. And I encourage you to do that. March 27th, here in the site boardroom from 8 to 9.30 every single month. We've got an entrepreneur exchange network of any business that needs a mentor or ideas or to, to bounce things off of or to listen to and learn and be able to teach. And we're doing it through the Job Creation Center here at CBCC and we're partnering with them in the chamber. So any of you are welcome to come to these meetings. March 27th, uh, eight eight to nine March 27th, a Tuesday. Eight, eight, eight to nine thirty. Side boardrooms are up here behind you. Right across. Hey, Anne. Good question. Anne. Yes, ma'am. I have a question for David and Shane. My seventeen-year-old son who is an honor student and has the opportunity to graduate early from high school, and his dream is to attend the College of Charleston and study architecture. However, he's severely dyslexic in written expression, uh, but very passionate and truly has believed that he's going to be the next um, American Idol when it comes to being an architect. So what advice would you have for this young man? Wow. Uh, my son uh, was diagnosed at, in the fourth grade as severely dyslexic. And uh, I know that today there's different ways to get a, a mentor or a, a, a tutor to help. But I will say this, that I almost didn't want my son to get the help because I, I read the stories about dyslexia and how it pushes you to be uh, more successful. And there's a high success rate of uh, dyslexics and ADH people um, in the past. But now we have these fixes to get them into school. And like your son, my son is now in uh, accelerated classes. Um, but I would let him chase those dreams because he's got incredible talent and burning desire. And one of the things that I read, and maybe you've read this about dyslexics, is we can't focus on one area. We see an entire picture. And so he's probably seeing, in architecture, the entire building as opposed to brick by brick. With that type of mind, it's easy to dream. And by that, if I listen to a song, I don't listen to like one section of the song. I'm the entire song, and I think it wraps itself around you somehow being dyslexic and ADHD. Does he have ADHD? Yeah. Um, it's very frustrating, but now they have this diagnosis, but I don't call it a handicap, I call it a superpower, okay? And um, so, in my opinion, let him chase his dreams, let him, because he will be successful. He sees things that we don't see. Absolutely. He walks into a room, he can tell you every detail, and I did 
for example, we were, we were shopping during the holidays, and we both came out of not the same bathroom, but just the same time. And he said, did you see all the different things in the restaurant? I'm like, no, I just went to the bathroom. <laughs> Well, this, this dyslexia and ADHD, the first one, dyslexia, there's a guy that wrote a book that my son read in the fifth grade. And my son was so proud to read this book because it's by a dyslexic talking about having this. Um, so, again, I call it a superpower. So, more power to him. And if he ever wants to call me and, and talk about it, because he will have struggles. You know, when dyslexics get up to read, we don't do too well. <laughs> so... I would piggyback exactly on what you said, actually, Shane. Um, I was, I guess you'd say, diagnosed in, in 10th grade, and my parent, and I'm not against medical treatment by any means, uh, but my parents chose to uh, go with the, the treatment of read more often. Uh, the more you read, it lessens dyslexia a little bit in, in your reading and the transposing of the words. But what the root of what comes out of that dyslexia is you, des you develop disciplines because you ha you still have to get the same amount of homework done as everybody else. You have to take the same amount of classes. So you invest yourself two to three times as much as somebody who doesn't have dyslexia. And what comes out of that, it, it breeds the success of somebody who knows how to have strong discipline. The only reason why I got through college, I believe, is because I had to study so hard in high school to get through high school where most kids, when they get to college, they don't have a study. And that's where they hit trouble. So I was already prepared for that. And I think that's what dyslexia does. It gets you prepared for the task at hand. Thank you. Any other questions?